Hello. Thank you for joining us. One year ago, when Stan died, the press wanted the story, and many of you asked what you could do to help. One of my continued responses was you could make a donation in Stan's name to the Ocean Institute in Dana Point, California, or the Northwest Maritime Center here in Port Townsend, Washington. Stan would be humbled to know how much money was raised in his name. At the Ocean Institute, they used the funds to develop the Stan Cummings Scholar Internship Program, and I'm happy to tell you that there are 25 Stan Cummings Scholars, and that number will continue to grow. Last winter, when Jake and I were brainstorming about how to use the money that you sent here to the Maritime Center, he told me about the audiovisual room's increased pandemic-related usage for distance learning, and that was the light bulb moment. I proceeded to tell him about Stan's pioneering achievements in distance learning 25 years ago, and I would like to share that story with you. But first, a little backstory. Stan earned his PhD from Stanford University in teacher education and curriculum development, essentially teaching science teachers how to teach science. He believed in a hands-on interactive approach. In 1972, he wrote in his teaching assistant journal, the vital ingredient for learning is the people who are brought together. That will determine whether or not significant learning takes place. People, interacting with people. He would go on to write interactive programs for the Yosemite Institute and the Ocean Institute. People here in Port Townsend often think of Stan as a fundraiser because of what he accomplished here at the Maritime Center. At heart, Stan was an educator. Now, back to our story. In 1985, Bob Ballard discovered the Titanic using a remote-operated vehicle he had invented and called Jason, after Jason and the Argonauts. In 1989, he developed the Jason Project in order to inspire students towards careers in science and exploration. In 1991, Stan and the Ocean Institute teamed up with Bob Ballard, and they brought the first Jason Project to a location west of the Mississippi. 800 students gathered at UC Irvine's Beckman Center to embark on an electronic field trip to the ocean floor of the Galapagos Islands. One of those students had the opportunity to drive the Jason ROV with a joystick. Simultaneously, 15,000 Orange County students were watching the live broadcast via live satellite in their classrooms. Of those 15,800 students, only one had an interactive experience. Following this, Stan believed he could build on this teaching method, and in 1985, Stan and the Ocean Institute launched Science Television. This consisted of a group of fifth graders who gathered at the Ocean Institute, and they were divided into a half a dozen different teams for science exploration. They were all followed by a video crew. A local cable company provided a live broadcast to the home school where students in the younger grades watched in awe their fellow scientists, conduct science experiments, conversed with them via telephone, and recorded the, the information presented to them on the TV screen in their own field data logs. Stan Cummings did this. 25 years before Zoom. After we cut the ribbon to the Stan Cummings classroom, you are invited to watch a 27-minute video of science television that was made in 1995. I know that you will find the fifth grade broadcasters, Holly and Nathan, very engaging as they introduce the six teams of their fellow student scientists engaging in science at the Ocean Institute. Engaging is the key word. But before I cut the ribbon, I want to thank you, the donors, who made this possible. Your generous contributions were used to upgrade the equipment in this classroom to the latest state-of-the-art technology for distance learning. 
I want to thank Jenk and the board who unanimously agreed that this was a fitting use of your money. And Len Goldstein who tirelessly shepherded this process over the last year. And Joel Goldstein who is providing this recording and all tech support. So, on behalf of the entire Cummings family, I now gratefully cut the ribbon for the Stan Cummings classroom. Thank you. Now please enjoy Science Television. Hello, my name is Nathan, and this is Holly. We will be your hosts for this broadcast of Science Television. Today the fifth grade classes from RH Dana School in Dana Point are on a research expedition. Nathan and I are here in the broadcast control room. That's right. We're at the Orange County Marine Institute in Dana Point Harbor, and we're using television to take you along with our teams of scientists to learn about the ocean. We're going to be sending you data and information as we go, and we hope you'll share some of your ideas and questions with us. We'll visit each of the science research team twice. The first visit will be to introduce you to the activity. During the second visit, you will be helping us to make specific observations and record data in your field data logs. Let's not waste any time. We have six teams of scientists out right now. The first team we'll visit is in the laboratory. They're looking at fish to determine what they eat. Does that mean they have to dissect the fish to look inside its stomach? I don't know. Let's go see. Hi, my name is Dejar Delgado, and this is Victor Chavez. We will be your hosts. Each of the six teams of students in the field has been issued a challenge and asked to respond using scientific methods. Students observing the broadcast have been issued the same challenge. Together, students in the field and in the classroom will be making observations and collecting data. The team in the laboratory is to determine what a particular fish eats. They begin by describing the tools they will use during their examination. This is the tool that we're going to use to open the fish. Um, these are scissors. These are tweezers. This class is composed of students for whom English is a second language. These students have a good mastery of English, while the third and fourth graders are more comfortable in Spanish. The students in the lab, therefore, speak first in English and then in Spanish. This, this is the inside, outside of the fish. We think that this fish... Is the flat is the fastest swimmer? What do you think? Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Jesús. Pe pensamos este pescado es el que vamos a abrir. Esta es la parte de afuera. Eh, pensamos que este pescado es el que corre más. Digo, el que corre, el que nada más rápido. ¿Qué piensan ustedes? Um, on your book, page two, you can check off the the shark that matches his mouth. Do you, what do you think he eats? How, how can we find out? En, en tu página dos puedes ver que hay un pescado que se parece a ese. Y tú qué piensas que come y cómo podemos saber? We're on the dock in Dana Point Harbor. We are investigating the water in the harbor. Our job is to use the information that we record to determine which of these Each of the six teams is visited in turn. They introduce their challenge and display the tools they will use to respond. We'll take a look at other teams later, but right now, let's rejoin the lab team. Este es el pescado que vamos a cortar ahorita. Y vamos a ver lo que tiene adentro el pescado. This is the fish we're going to cut. We're going to see what is inside of this fish. Okay. 
we see what do you what do you see here we see hard I, I think it has a lot of blood we we see like little fingers and we see the stomach big and we see the thing the the tube and it goes around all the fish now we're gonna we're gonna pass to Sandra. Do you guess what the fish eats? We think that the fish eats small fish. Let's not open the stomach. The students have examined their fish and determined that it is a fast swimmer. They have also compared the mouth to mouths of other fish noting the sharp teeth. Their challenge is to determine what the fish eats. They have formed a hypothesis and now seek evidence to support it. a lot of tuna in here and we see uh, the whole fish we can see it and the eyes here's the tail here's the head smash what? look at how much food this fish ate look how much this fish ate Eat. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Okay. Was your hypothesis correct? Nice work, team. Now we're off to the dock and the oceanography team. Hi, my name is Brayden, is Brayden, and this is Nicole. We will be your host on the for the investigations in physical o oceanography. We're here with the students from Miss Bungard's class. We're on a dock in Dana Point Harbor. We are investigating the water in the harbor. Our job is to use the information that we record to determine which of these fish live in the harbor. We will be measuring different physical characteristics of the water. These measurements will help us understand how living things survive in their environment. We will ask some of our friends on the team to describe the things we will be measuring and the equipment that we will be using. Turn to page three in your field study log to check off any things that you see. Hi, this is a SESHI disc. It is used to measure how far down you can see in the ocean. Hi, this is a thermometer. It measures how hot or cold the water is in Celsius. Hi, this is a lead line. It measures how deep the ocean is. Hi, this is a pH testing kit. It measures how much acid is in the water. Hi, this is a hydrometer. It measures how much salt is in the ocean water. When we return, you will be collecting data on temperature and salinity. See you later. Hi. My name it's is remarkable to realize that these students arrived at the institute less than 30 minutes ago. With one or two exceptions, they did not know they would be speaking on television. There are cue cards available, but much of the dialogue is ad-libbed. The goal of science television is not a rehearsed and polished show. The goal is to use television to communicate events in real time, from a small group of students in the field to their younger classmates back at school. Let's return to the dock team, which is studying the physical characteristics of the water in Dana Point Harbor. Their challenge is to determine what fish would live in the harbor. They've learned about several fish and the type of water these fish prefer. They will now ask their classmates watching to assist with the measurements. Hydrometer and write down your observations. Here you see another innovation of science television, the observation sequence. It would be easy to simply make the measurements ahead of time and tell the students the water temperature. Instead, science television asked the students watching to take their own measurements.
In this exercise, students take the average of two measurements to improve accuracy, an important feature of good scientific methodology. This engages the viewer actively, and the camera becomes an extension of the student's eyes and ears. Science television can take students to places where expense or physical limitations prevent their being able to have an experience firsthand. My name is Justin, and this is Jamie. Next, we go to the animal observation team at the touch tank. Their challenge is to observe these animals carefully and then pose questions. Note that the students handling the animals talk about how the animal feels, while letting the students viewing make their own observations about shape and color. The touch tank where many small animals and fish are kept. It's like strong in the center and then Bum's side feels bumpy and it just, the front side and the back side feel hard. Its tentacles are real squishy and it, on the little suction cups under the tentacles, they're real sticky. And this, pat, this back part where it sticks onto the glass it's real smushy and soft-like, and it's real squishable, and back here it is that's where it sticks within. After students in their classrooms have an opportunity to communicate their questions by phone and computer modem, the broadcast returns to the touch tank. Listen as they receive their answers. Jade from Mrs. Seach's class asked us, why didn't we, why didn't we pick up the sea anemone? The reason why we didn't want to pick up the sea anemone was because it's kind of attached to the, to the surface of this plastic of the tank. And it, another reason why we didn't want to, when we take it out, it closes up and we can't observe it. Trenton from Mrs. Burnett's class wants to know, how long do horn sharks grow? Horn sharks grow about three and a half feet to four feet long. Brittany from Mrs. Barnes' class wants to know how long does it take the sea cucumber to grow back its organs after it throws them up? Well, Brittany, that's a very good question. It takes about 10 weeks to, for a sea cucumber to grow back its guts after it threw them up. Five of the six student teams are concerned with marine organisms or oceanography. One team, however, takes advantage of a unique geologic site adjacent to the institute. We are here to measure the angle of some ancient rocks made of the ocean sediments that were deposited on the seafloor about 10 million years ago. Scientists think this formation was underwater, an underwater landslide. Hi, my name is Tyler and this is Megan. We, we will be your hosts for the geology observations. I'm here with students from Miss Bungard's class and Mrs. Bond's class. Measuring is a form of observing. Observations made by measurement are usually more precise than other methods. In our science classes, we, will, we have studied how rocks are formed when sediments are deposited layer on layer. Originally, these rocks lay flat on the seafloor, but the earth, quakes, and other forces pushed them up and folded them. We'll show you how that might happen. Hi, my name is Tej and this is Jason. These pieces of clay represents layers in the settlement. This, this is what happens when two plates collide.
On page five of your field data logs, you'll see some of the tools we use to, to study rocks. Check them off as we show them to you. Two of the teams are aboard the Marine Institute's research vessel, Sea Explorer, anchored just offshore. The signals are carried from ship to shore via microwave. Hi, my name is Sarah and this is Robert. We will be your host for the Animal Probe. We are on board the RVC Explorer at our offshore sampling site. When we arrive, our job will be to set otter trawl nets to sample the animal population on the ocean floor. Once we receive the net, we will try to determine the natural history of the animals we catch. What's natural history, Robert? Natural history describes an animal's lifestyle, what it eats, what it eats, and other dangers it faces. Where it lives and how it lives, like does it move around a lot or stay in one place. Okay, let's show the students on the support teams the net and how it works. You'll need to turn to page two in your field data log and check off the, equipments as we, the equipment as we show, show it to you. Hi, Diana. Could you please tell us a little about the otter trawl net? The otter trawl net is designed to skim along the surface of muddy bottoms and collect animals with names like lizardfish and scorpionfish. The net is shaped like a funeral with a tickler chain at the lower tip of the opening. The tickler chain steers up the lower tip of the opening. The tickler chain steers up the muddy bottom and forces the fish into the opening. The fish swims through the net towards the cod end, which is tied off to keep them from escaping. Thank you, Diana. David, what do you think you will catch in the otter trawl net? Uh, some fish and, uh, the, uh, new ones are, um, uh, 25 feet long. You use them to pull them to, so you can open the mouth to catch fish and don't get it tangled that much because if you do, then it'll get, um, you won't catch any fish and you'll lose it. Thank you, David. Brian, could you please tell us about the otter trawl doors? This team of students will help the Marine Institute staff technicians release the otter trawl net. A typical catch brings in a dozen or so fish species and several invertebrates. The students are challenged to speculate as to the natural history of the animal from observations of its body shape and coloration, a classic discussion of form deriving from function plow through the muddy bottom. The design of the doors also help spread apart the net's opening so it does not collapse onto itself. Thank you. Now we are going to drop the otter trawl. Who do I talk to? Do I You're going to her Could you please tell us about the winch? The lead lines are attached to cable that is coiled on this switch. The winch is powered by hydraulics and can pull in objects that weigh over 2,000 pounds. Once the net is set into the water behind RVC Explorer, the winch feeds out the cable, slowly, slowly lowering the net down to the muddy bottom 180 feet. Since the boat is moving forward as the net is lowered, over 540 feet of cable will be used to sink the net to the bottom. Thank you, Diana. We'll be back to you a little later. Right now, we're going up to the pilot house to see how the navita navigation team is doing. Matt, are you there? Hi. I sure am. I'm up here on the second deck near the pilot house where students from Miss Myers Cots are helping the captain navigate the ship. Three of the technicians will, with me will take you on a tour. Turn to page one in your field data log and let's follow them. Hi, this is the fathometer, and it's used to measure how deep the water is. It, um, it throws sound waves down to the bottom of the ocean, and the longer it takes the sound waves to get back up, the deeper the water is. And it's also called the fish finder by fishermen, because you can see fish on it, too. Okay, this is, thank you, Parker. This is Kenny. Hi, um, my name is Kenny, and um, I'm um, introducing the GPS, and... It tells you where we're going, and if it's a f foggy day, like it's not today, um, you um, might, it tells you where you are.
That's it for now. We will be coming back to us in a few minutes for your first observations. If you're on the animal probe team, get up close to your monitor so you can see clearly. Before the members of the navigation support team begin their observations, we're going to show you how the video signals are being brought to your classroom. Students in Ms. Malott's class are working on the production of this broadcast right now. We'll talk with Daniel who will explain how it happens. Four of the exploration teams are nearby and there are wires going to the video cameras taking their picture. The navigation and animal probe teams are on the sea explorer out there so we can't run wires to them. Instead, we use a microwave radio signal. The signal is sent from the boat to the antenna you see behind me. Now we're going to show you what happens to all the signals from all the cameras recording our field explorations. Hi, I'm WJ, and I'm the director on today's Orange County Marine Institute Science TV broadcast. Here we are at Science TV's Video Control, where we make decisions as to what pictures you see. All the signals from the different cameras at the different stations are received here. So for instance, if I'd like Cree, my technical director, to show you the Science TV logo, he can do that. Or if we want to show you the touch tank, Cree can also show you that. We have over 30 technicians working today to bring you this broadcast. So let's go back to Dockside and continue. Hi, it's me again. Once the signal is selected, it is sent by microwave to the Dimension Cable Television in San Juan Capistrano, and they broadcast it to you. Now back to you in the studio. I hope you understood all that. If you have any questions, now is a good time to write them down. <laughs> the animal observation support team should have their questions ready to go. We have technicians standing by telephones and can help you with answers. Here's a number if you want to call. Now it's time for you to do your part. We're going to begin by going back out on the RBC Explorer with the animal probe team. The navigation support team should be standing by because you're next. Here we go. Hi. Well, our nets were set and we've come up with quite a catch. We're going to show you some of the fish that came up in the net and, and ask that you to make some observations on one of them to help us determine its natural history. Please turn to page four in your field data log. Now, let's switch over to the navigation team so we can plot the position of the RVC Explorer. Your first challenge is to determine our position from the latitude and longitude. Here is a close-up view of the GPS. Write down the numbers you see on the screen on page one of your field data log. Next, you're going to observe the sea conditions. We'll plan the camera over the ocean while you make the observations. Use the back of your field data guide to write on. Our time is almost up. I hope you have enjoyed coming along on our science expedition to Orange County Marine Institute in Dana Point Harbor. And we hope you've learned something too. Remember, science is an active process, not just a collection of facts and information. You have to think. You have to observe. You have to communicate with other people. Science is doing, and by doing science, you learn about the world you live in. Me, Nathan and Holly, we'll see you in school. Bye. Science television is an experimental program. As you've seen, teams of students from area schools join Marine Institute scientists in the laboratory and aboard a research vessel. 
Images from these trips are carried by a local cable provider back to the schools from which the students came and where their younger classmates are able to follow the activities live on school monitors. The students make observations and collect data directly from the screen and use the telephone and modem hookups to ask questions and communicate their ideas to the teams in the field. The Orange County Marine Institute is committed to education and is a nationally recognized learning laboratory for the creation and development of new ideas and technologies to teach students of all ages about science, the ocean, and our historic relationship to the sea. Those ideas which are proven effective are then disseminated throughout the country, extending the Institute's reach far beyond Dana Point Harbor. The Institute has achieved national recognition for its creativity and effectiveness. For more information about science television or other programs of the Orange County Marine Institute, write Orange County Marine Institute, 24200, Dana Point Harbor Drive, Dana Point, California, 92629. The Orange County Marine Institute is self-supporting and relies on fees, tuition, and retail sales to meet expenses.